What's up everyone? Welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike. This is my whiteboard and today we're going to piggyback off of yesterday's segment. We talked about building a watch list, the importance of building a watch list, how we can create a custom watch list for ourselves depending on whether we have certain interests or maybe certain sectors we know more things about than not. And today we're going to dig a little deeper into that and we're going to talk about the importance of market awareness. So of course when we have a watch list we have something to look at but really the importance of building a watch list is the ability to have that market awareness and really it's understanding under the hood what sort of relationships there are between different underlyings and how that might affect the positions we have. So let's get right into it and we'll discuss a few of the top keys for market awareness on the next slide here. So when we're first talking about market awareness really we're talking about the understanding of current market relationships. So we've got current market relationships there and that's really the huge key and takeaway that I want you to have for this segment. When we talk about market awareness it is very easy to revert back to maybe traditional correlations or traditional markets where you might say okay well if the equities are tied to bonds and if the equities go down then usually there's a flight to safety in bonds where if our equities go down bonds go up sure that is generally true for the most part but sometimes it doesn't always have to be that way so it's always important to understand current market relationships and how that is going to affect our trading in the future. So we've got two highlighted sections here, correlation and beta. So we're going to dig in into correlation today, where correlation is really the strength or bond of relationships for one underlying to another. And beta is basically the magnitude of that relationship. So if we understand that correlation is referring to essentially the strength of relationship from one underlying to the other or maybe a lack of relationship from one underlying to the other. If we have a strong correlation, whether that's positive or negative, beta is going to give us a good understanding of the magnitude of that relationship. So understanding these two keys is going to be excellent for today and we're going to dig into correlation a little bit later but if you want to lear learn more about beta I did do a previous uh, whiteboard on each of these segments so if you'd like to go back and check those out you can click on find shows at the top of or you can click on the little magnifying glass in the upper right corner and just type in correlation or type in beta and you'll see my segments pop up there. Secondly, we want to know how the market may affect our portfolio. So really the true key takeaway for market awareness is understanding how the market can affect my portfolio. Really, am I diversified? That's a question we always ask ourselves. Well, the only way we can answer that is understanding all of the positions we have on and whether they are positively correlated, negatively correlated, or have no correlation at all. So our goal here is to have delta neutral portfolios that are uncorrelated or have uncorrelated underlyings so that if some underlyings go up we should see some underlyings go down and that would result in profitability and maybe some and if we're seeing losses in another that's totally fine because we're really taking away that theta so with selling premium approach to underlyings in the market if we have the ability to withstand large moves in the market whether that be up or down and we're still collecting theta or time decay at the end of the day then we can put ourselves in a profitable situation so really we need to understand, are we diversified? And also, are all my eggs in one basket, maybe indirectly or inadvertently? We need to understand if we have a bunch of different underlyings that we find out later on that we were all correlated. So let's say I've got, so let's say I'm really comfortable with selling puts and I decide that I want to sell put in Google and I want to sell a put in Apple and I want to sell a put in SPY. Maybe I don't really understand that all three of those have a very strong correlation and really I'm just tripling down on the same assumption. I'm not diversified at all. So that's really what we're talking about when we're looking at wondering if all of our eggs are in one basket. So we're going to look at correlation and how we can maybe revert to doing the opposite. So getting ourselves in an uncorrelated situation and really balancing our deltas in that manner. So on the next slide we're going to be talking about correlation at its core. So when we're looking at correlation it's really the dynamic measure of mean relationships and it's really really important to understand that market awareness and correlation are dynamic. They can change. So 
while one month might show a very strong positive correlation for two underlyings, it is possible that in the next month they might not be correlated at all, or maybe they'll have a negative correlation. It is pretty common to have some underlyings that are mostly positively correlated, but at some points they might drop down to be negatively correlated. So what does that mean? Well, when you're looking at correlation and the measure of correlation, we're either going to have a positive correlation, a negative correlation, or no correlation at all. So when we're looking at positive correlation, we're basically looking at values from 0 to 1.0, and underlyings that are positively correlated are positively correlated if they're on the same side of their mean more often than not. So I'm not going to dig too deep into that today, but definitely check out my previous correlation whiteboard and we really dug into what that means and we're going to give you a little bit of an example later. So you'll be able to see that visually, but definitely check that previous whiteboard out if you're foggy on what that actually means. So. Really, when we're talking about positive correlation, we can assume that if two underlyings are strongly positively correlated, that if one goes up, then the other should also go up. That's not always the case, but correlation gives us that ability to make a better educated guess as to where the other underlying would move in relation to another. And on the same side, if we have a positively correlated relationship, then if one goes down, we should be able to believe that the other would also go down. So if we can understand that positive correlation is where two underlyings should move together more often than not, then a negative correlation would just be the opposite. So a negative correlation is going to be shown from negative 1.0 to 0, where 0 is the common denominator between these two, where really there's no correlation at all. So the stronger or closer we get to 1.0, the stronger our positive correlation is. And the closer we get to negative 1.0, the stronger our negative correlation will be. And a negative correlation is just a measure where two underlyings are negatively correlated if they're on the opposite side of their means more often than not. So if we draw a graph, which we're going to actually get into later on in this segment, where we're looking at SPY and TLT and how they're normally on the opposite side of their means. But if you understand that they have a negative correlation, and if one is going up, then we can maybe assume that the other should be going down, and vice versa. If one goes down, then maybe the other one should be going up. So really, it boils down to understanding the positive and negative correlation, and really understanding that it is completely dynamic. It can change because it is a backward-looking metric. Really, we're looking at a specific time frame, and we're looking at whether those underlyings were on the same side of their mean more often than not, or on the opposite side of their means more often than not. So let's go to the next slide, and we can talk about how we can view this in Doe. So this is a beautiful diagram you can actually get for totally free on Doe. You don't even have to have a brokerage account. You can actually access this without a brokerage login. So all you have to do is go to doe.com and you can either pull up the trade page or the grid page. And in the upper right corner of the trade page or along the right side of the grid page, you're going to see two opposing arrows that you can click on. So if you click on those arrows, you're going to see a market awareness correlation grid on the right side. And you can actually click on the little binoculars or the expand button to give you this massive list right here. So right now, basically what we've done is we've created a correlation matrix, which is really easy for you to understand where certain underlyings are in relation to another. So in this specific example, we've got plenty of underlyings. It is static at this point, so the underlyings you see here can't be changed, but it does cover a wide breadth of the market. So we've got things like USO in there, we've got gold, we've got TLT, we've got SPY. So really a lot of the big name underlyings and a lot of the big market indicators we will have in here. And really the best way to read this is the most green underlyings here are going to be the most strongly correlated underlyings. So you can look at one underlying up here, measure it against another underlying along the left side, and see whether they've got a strong bright green color, which is going to indicate a strong positive correlation. Or you can see if it has a dark red color, which would indicate a negative correlation. So today we're going to dig into SPY and TLT. So you can see I've selected SPY here and measured it against TLT along this x-axis here. 
and it's giving me a pretty dark negative correlation. So if we go to the next slide, we're gonna dig into this a little bit deeper and we're gonna see exactly what this means. So if you select one of those specific grid tiles, along the right side, it's going to pull up the SPY graph and measure it against TLT. So right now we have a negative 0.58 correlation. So I would say that's a pretty moderate negative correlation. And you can see what this would mean for the graph. So if you take a look at the time frame here, you can see that TLT was down when SPY was up. And when SPY ended up coming down a bit, you can see that was the exact same time that, SP, that TLT ended up climbing in price. And then as SPY started to climb in price, you can see that TLT actually started to drop. So this is where that negative correlation comes from. As one underlying starts to rise, the other starts to fall, and that's what creates this correlation. If these were much more distinct, so if SPY was completely rising here and then dropping, and you saw that when that happened, TLT was perfectly in sync, you would probably have a much more negative correlation. So something that was much closer to negative 1.0. That is the most we can possibly get in terms of correlation is negative 1.0 or positive 1.0. But as you can see, these tend to move against each other. There are situations where they didn't. So right here, SPY didn't really have any movement at all where TLT took a big spike. So maybe that was something that brought this correlation more close to zero. So when we're looking at this Doe correlation matrix, it is looking at the previous one month of data. So what we're looking at right here is the previous one month of data, and we're measuring, looking at the mean prices, and saying, where was SPY in relation to TLT? So if we drew a line right across this page here, you can see that Right here, when TLT was above the mean, SPY was below the mean, and vice versa, all the way going back to the beginning of the time frame. So that is where that negative correlation comes from in this specific example. So let's go on to the next slide and we'll talk further about some takeaways here. So really, when we're looking at market awareness, it's a key to portfolio management. So when we're looking at being sure that we are diversified and we understand how one relationship is going to affect another. So maybe if I have two different underlyings, I wanna make sure that those two are either positively correlated or negatively correlated or have no correlation at all. If they're both positively correlated, maybe I would have a bullish strategy in one underlying and maybe a bearish strategy in another underlying. That would give me a little bit of diversification. And also, current relationships are crucial. It's really important to understand that markets do change. While we do have pretty tried and true correlations such as volatility and equities, so if you look at the VIX and the S&Ps, more often than not, almost all the time, when the, when the S&Ps drop, the VIX will rise. And when the S&Ps rise, the VIX will drop. But there are certain scenarios, it's pretty rare, where I have seen the S&Ps go up and the VIX also going up at the same time. So it is going to come down to market awareness and making sure that the current relationship is what we're looking at. There are always going to be those relationships like we just talked about with the VIX and S&Ps, but the current relationships are the ones we want to look at. And really, market awareness gives us creative hedging. So let's take gold and equities, for example. Gold and equities currently have a pretty negative correlation. But let's say I'm really comfortable with selling puts and I love that strategy. If I wanted to creatively hedge, maybe I would be able to sell a put in an equity that has a strong correlation to the S&P 500 and also sell a put in gold. If right now they have currently a negative correlation and I'm selling puts in both of those, that's going to give me a better understanding and a better way to really give myself exposure to both sides of the market. So maybe if the S&Ps go up and I'm able to be profitable on that position where I sold the put in the equity, I might see a loser on the gold position. But at the end of the day, if I want to be balanced in that way, I can do that creatively using market awareness and correlation to do so. So this has been my takeaways for market awareness. Hopefully you enjoyed them. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you've got any questions or feedback, shoot me an email at support at or you can tweet Mike. Stay tuned though, we've got Jim Schultz coming up with Theory to Practice coming up next.
Hey everyone, thanks for watching our video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up or share it with a friend. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, or go to our website. Thank <laughs> you.